Okay, so we're focusing on two different Montreal Canadiens players here today. One of them we've already spoken at length about in a previous video, and the other, well, this is the first actual time we're getting deep into his situation on the team. So, if you can't read, we're talking today about Philippe Deneau and Max Domi, and the weird kind of mirroring circumstances that these two are exhibiting with the Habs Hockey Club at the moment. So, context behind the team, both of these guys are centers, or at least Domi is technically a center, I guess he can play wing, but come on, he's a center. In the 2020 Stanley Cup playoffs and the play-in series, after the emergence of Jesperi Kotkaniemi and Nick Suzuki into the team's top six, these two guys were the guys who were in the bottom six. I didn't think I would be saying this a year ago, but hey, Dano and Domi are bottom six centers on the Habs, as Dano was centering the third line and Domi was centering the fourth line. Now, we know the Claude Julien said himself, I don't view that fourth line with Max Domi and Weiss as the fourth line, quote unquote. That's just the line that happens to be out there last, that happens to have two AHL caliber players on their squad, and that happens to get just under 10 minutes of ice time a night. That's totally not the fourth line. As for Deneau, well, we know the story of Deneau. He came from Chicago. He wasn't really too great with the Blackhawks, but with the Montreal Canadiens, he became a very good defensive center, one of the most underrated defensive centers in the entire league, and a guy who legitimately does so much more than the points can dictate. It's just, even though he started off the play-in series against the Pittsburgh Penguins as the number one center, normally playing on a line with Gallagher and Tatar, once Nick Suzuki became good, man, Deneau was thrusted down in there into a third-line role. He was playing with Byron, he was playing with Lekkanen, he was playing with guys that he wasn't really all too used to because he normally played with that Gallagher and Tatar duo, if not other players in the top six as well. And once the going got tough against the Flyers, Claude Julien and, well, Kirk Muller, they decided to have Suzuki and Kotkaniemi as the one-two. Two brand new guys on the team, two young guys, a 19-year-old and a 20-21-year-old player. Certainly a different vision for the Canadians. Well, we have ourselves this article published on the TVA Sports talking about how Philippe Deneau himself thought about that situation. This was published on August 25th. We'll translate it to English via the Google machine because I cannot read French properly. Philippe Deneau questions his future in Montreal is the headline. The very first sentence kind of sums it up in its entirety very nicely. An old saying goes that the happiness of some is the misfortune of others. What are we talking about here? Well, we're talking about the actual emergence of 14 and 15 once again. The article goes over how Kotkaniemi and Suzuki were very good. This is what Philippe Deneau said just about that, as to how 14 and 15 can be the top two centers on this team. I don't know if I'm ready to take it, Philippe Deneau says. I like to produce offensively, and I know that I can still reach another level offensively. I don't know if I want to limit myself to a strictly defensive role. I don't think I can improve myself by having only defensive tasks, he said on Tuesday as part of a conference call with the media. But the response most representative of the Quebecois state of mind came a few moments later, when a reporter asked him if his role with the team would have an influence on his desire to stay in Montreal. He says yes. In the playoffs, the coaches wanted to see what the kids could do, and they shuffled the cards. My role has become strictly defensive, and I'm repeating myself, but I know I can bring more than that. I've always had great chemistry with Gallagher and Tatar. That trio can work. So, yeah, is it fair to say that he is somewhat to some capacity frustrated at the fact that he wasn't given a primarily offensive role once the going got tough? Now, I will say there are a lot more quotes in this article for sure. If you go down, you scroll down, you can see more things about Deneau talking about the bubble, talking about the future of the team, talking about how good some of these young guys are. But this angle is focusing on whether or not he is going to use this deployment as a means of determining whether or not he's going to stay in Montreal or if he's going to leave. 
because Deneau right now has a $3.083 million contract that expires a year from now. It's a very good deal for a guy who brings the amount of value that he does. But we've already spoken at this before. There's an idea that says out there that Deneau does have the possibility of getting traded simply because... The number one and number two center spots on this team are looking more and more to be like Suzuki's and Kanyemi's to keep. It's in that similar vein as to why we were talking about Domi before in this kind of way as well. However, when it comes to the Deneau conversation, this is what Claude Julien said, separately albeit. Claude Julien says that they're trying to create a winning atmosphere in Montreal, and they want players who won't feel threatened if a young player takes away opportunity or ice time from them. That in itself is literally kind of going after to know. We have ourselves another quote here. This is from Arpon Basu, also on the same day, the 26th of August. Claude Julien downplayed Philippe Deneau's comments. He said that teams in the NHL today need everyone to produce, and no one plays a strictly defensive role. It's not like I'm going to tell Philippe Deneau to stop scoring. So... We'll see what's going on with Deneau, man. I'm not insinuating anything, not going to say that he's going to request a trade or anything, but there is some, let's just say, difference of ideals, I guess I would say, in this situation, just based off of how Philippe Deneau has voiced his concerns and how Claude Julien has rebuttaled with it. Because sure, the perspective is not flawed. You want everybody on your team to score, not just everybody in the top six, but at the same time, it's much easier to score when you're playing with Tatar and Gallagher than it is when you're playing with Dale Weiss. I'll just say that right away as well. And speaking about playing with Dale Weiss, we have an update on Max Domi. Because in that same press conference where Claude Julien talked about Philippe Deneau, it's the same one where he mentioned how he's going to stay in Montreal. Claude Julien said this about Max Domi. He's much better suited at center than he is at the wing, so we have to look at that. Because we know during the play-in series, during the playoffs, Domi played wing, he played center, he was all over the place like he usually is. But Claude Julien also suggests that Nick Suzuki is definitely a center and drew comparisons between him and David Krejci. We already spoke about the Suzuki and the Martian-like route. If you want to check out that video, it's somewhere in the related, I'm pretty sure. But we also have another update on Domi. Not only did Claude Julien say that Domi is a better center than a winger, but after this, somebody noticed that Domi actually put Montreal back in his Instagram and Twitter bios. So people were kind of joking around saying that, oh, because Claude Julien said he's better as a center, Domi now wants to stay. So we'll see whether or not this whole Gaudreau paling Domi thing has any sense of truth in it in the next few weeks. If you don't know what I'm talking about, hey, we made a video about that a few days ago. It's got 20,000 views. I cannot believe that amount of traction on that video. But... I guess it shouldn't be too surprising because people love their Montreal Canadiens trade rumors. It's just Philippe Deneau, man. He's the guy that I didn't really think would ever enter this conversation in a legitimate way where he and the team incite conversation that could potentially ignite that kind of talk. Last time we talked about Deneau was off of the mere suggestion of a journalist as to whether or not the Habs would consider moving him because they already have some good forward pieces. So for Deneau... Even though he is one of the more better defensive centers in the entire league, I still do believe he does have a lot to give offensively. It's just, for me personally, man, I want Suzuki and Kakanyemi as the one-two on this team already. We know they're ready to handle it. We know they're good enough. We know that it worked better than Deneau, Gallagher, Tatar did during some parts of the Philadelphia series. So... Just to straight up say, oh, I'm given a more defensive role. I'm not playing with the top guys anymore. They don't want me to score anymore. I think that's kind of unfair because, to be honest, at that point in time in the playoffs, it made more sense to at least try Suzuki out, and it paid off. We saw how good Suzuki was. He was one of the only producers towards the end of that Philly series. So, for Dano and Domi... Not really too sure what's going to go on here. The scales have kind of flipped. Domi isn't really in that questionable territory because he put MTL back in his Instagram and Twitter bios. But it's now Philippe Deneau who is in that questionable state. So we'll see what happens with this. Comment down below what you think about Domi, Deneau, the rest of the Montreal Canadian Center core, and the Habs in their trade rumors itself. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.